so it's day five and honestly like reading through my comments lurking around in several discords there are still a lot of people who are asking oh who should i actually pick with my ssr selector how do i team build should i pick up a dupe for this character if i have this type of team comp right now who is the best character to go for and then also oh should i take into account like the future units etc etc so many questions let's answer them today hi welcome back to the channel my name is lace this is a tower of fantasy video i've already told you what we're going to be talking about this is the team building guide this is the who should i pick with my selected guide this is literally going to answer all of those questions should i pick up a dupe should i not etc etc and so with that let's get on with it i'll run through a couple of examples as well after we're done but first i actually want to start off with this thing over here yes a notepad in the browser with essentially what i would call my guiding principles my philosophy in terms of team building and no it's not just like my philosophy it's philosophy that i've actually gathered from cn servers from some of the veterans and with a little bit of my secret source as well all right so this is essentially a tldr of what we're looking for when we actually go ahead and team build as well as this one down here let's start off with number one the top priority number one priority is that you must always have at least one shield breaker okay if you don't have a shield breaker the choice is so obvious your ssr selector you go get the meryl you go get the king depending on if you want to more like pve pvp etc etc generally speaking number two all teams should consist of at least a shield breaker and a DPS where spot three is flex. Now that's going to tie into this one down here. The current meta is one shield breaker, two DPS and three support. Now I don't really like this. I don't like the fact that number three is support. I personally would say this is more of a flex role, right? Because uh, that's, that's what I'm doing and it's not me coping. It's just, you know, not everybody is able to just, oh, here is a support out of nowhere. And so for 99% of us, this should actually apply. Unless you're one of the unlucky ones who rolled like a Coco and a dupe Coco or something. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting place to be. Number three, very, very obvious one. If you have an elemental resonance booster, such as Nemesis, you go for another character in that element. Very easy consideration. If not, then I don't know, man. You're clearly not reading the skills. And 3A, if not, then either way, don't worry about it or plan ahead. Number four, we're going to start thinking about the weapon resonances. So I'm talking like the one, two, three balance. You got the DPS, you got the shield breaker or tank, you got the support. That's going to give you some extra bonuses. Number five, generally speaking, prioritize not dupes, especially if you have the selector. And I'll explain the reasons as to why, but the TLDR is that the dupes will come right? The dupes will come because we are getting quite a decent income, especially as free-to-play players, and get even more if you go on the monthly, etc. And remember, we're getting those coins. Those coins are going to be able, the black gold coins, they are going to be, be able to be used to buy dupes. And so if you have the ability to actually select a character or select the dupe, generally speaking, even if it's like top tier, you know, oh, getting that Samir one star or getting the king one star, I'm still going to recommend, generally speaking, going for either the Meryl, going for the Huma, going for... <laughs> even a freaking shit or etc etc because who knows number six we're going to talk about the future and then number seven we'll also have considerations about pve versus pvp now with all of that being said let's go over and have a look and run through a couple of different scenarios so you can kind of see how these principles are kind of applied now let me give you guys my example right so i got huma I got Meryl and I got Tsubasa. And so what I have here is that I have like uh, pretty much a generalist. She is a tank. She is also a tank, but like Meryl is a specialized shield breaker. Huma can also be used as a shield breaker. And I have Tsubasa, which is a DPS. So I have a couple of options. Going by these priorities, these kinds of philosophies, I should therefore either go for like a Coco. I should go for the Nemesis, which <laughs> I wish I could. I should go for the Zero. However, I don't want Coco. I don't want Zero. I don't want Heal. I want more DPS, right? And so I'm going to think about some of the other things, such as prioritizing not dupes, weapon resonances, and take into account the future. So let's talk about weapon resonances. Right now, my team is freaking two tanks and a DPS. What this means is that I'm going to be getting this resonance over here. I get uh, increased damage reduction and shatter by 60% and aggro by 800%. Now, this is really freaking annoying because I don't know about you guys, but I've been pushing that bygone phantasms thing. And because I'm running two tanks and a DPS, I am getting timed out i am not meeting the dps checks and so i would actually recommend strongly strongly recommend not running fortitude especially for these types of game modes and actually go ahead and try run either attack or balance and so to be able to run attack i need to be able to pick up another dps and then on the other hand i could pick up a support so that i can run balance again unless it's nemesis i don't really want to touch the other supports i'm not really interested in the coco the healing the zero i mean i'm kind of interested in zero because of the pvp capabilities but if i didn't care about 
about PvP, another consideration, remember this one down here, if I didn't care about PvP, then the choice is very clear. I want another DPS, I want to be able to run this resonance, I want to replace either Huma or Meryl with another DPS. DPS, King, do I need another shield breaker? I don't, I could, but I don't. I want to run Samir. Samir, in my case, is the obvious choice. And so for my SSR selector, I would pick up Samir. Now, there are a couple of different ways that I could go, right? So I see the Tsubasa, and then I think about this one over here. Take into account the future. And if you guys have not watched my uh, tier list guide that I've uploaded a few days ago, then go check it out. And the TLDR is that Tsubasa has the longest staying power if you can get more of her dupes. Don't do it, man. Don't freaking do it. <laughs> Especially because there is actually no other way in the game to guarantee who to get. And so what that means is that getting a new character, even if it's like an alleged trash tier character, has more value than just getting a dupe. I can get a Tsubasa dupe anytime. I just got to trade 120 of the standard banner coins and I'll get C1, C6, whatever. It doesn't matter. However, there is no way that I can guarantee myself in getting a King or getting a Samir or getting a Crow or getting a Shiro. Even a Shiro, man. Look, she's so freaking cute. That's why, especially with the selectors don't select the dupe just get somebody else because what happens is that you can get king and then for example uh maybe the meta changes maybe we do go down a different route and king apparently is going to have a long staying power he is going to be giga giga meta and so at that point you can actually just purchase his shards from that shop and so that's essentially like the philosophies the principles taken into account and applied onto my own situation now I want to take like some random examples so that I can show you these philosophies, generally speaking, will work for everyone. So let's say I rolled into a Crow and a Shiro, right? So Shiro, she is a shield breaker. However, some people would argue that she is not exactly the best shield breaker. So at this point, you kind of have to make the decision. Is Shiro breaking shields fast enough for your liking? If not, then consider King or Meryl or Maybe not Huma, but because she has like the same shield breaking capabilities as the Shiro over there. So for me, the first priority here, I'll be like, okay, well, is Shiro good enough for shield breaking? If not, then King if PvE or Meryl if PvP. And so let's, for example, say that instead of Shiro, we had King. Crow King, a pretty good combo because we have Crow who's a fantastic Vault DPS and King, one of the best shield breakers. Now, there are a couple of different options. If we want to go PvP, we could actually consider Zero. Zero has a fantastic shield that is going to come in so, so handy, especially against all of those Nemesis abusers. And this could be the selector. However, what you should not consider is Samir because Samir, Crow, first of all, not only are they both DPSs, so they're competing for the same spot, but they're both Vault DPSs, which is just horrible. The other option is it could be Tsubasa. Tsubasa, yes, she is a DPS, but on the other hand, if you guys did watch that video, Tsubasa does end up transitioning into a support role where she gives all team damage plus 15%. And so this could actually work as well. DPS, shield breaker, as well as your support, offensive support. Now let's quickly talk about Crow himself. And I'm sorry that this does not apply to everybody, but the whole Crow versus Samir debate, I wanna show you guys something. And I think it's this one over here by your boy Zakim. You already know it, I steal his content, but thank you so much, man. Is Crow good slash stronger than Samir? Crow is by far the strongest DPS when using the jetpack tech. So essentially you have to jump, jetpack slash glide, and then hold attack. And being able to repeat this, you can actually do an insane amount of damage. However, this only works, generally speaking, in the open world. So I'm talking like in some other game modes where you can't use a jetpack, then Samir is stronger, especially with her aerial attack. And so what I've gotten out of this is that Samir, generally speaking, for most content is better than Crow until Crow is able to use a jetpack tech. If you don't use the jetpack tech, then your Crow is pretty trash. But if you are able to actually use the jetpack tech, then you're a freaking god. You're probably probably our DPSing everybody. And so this is the part where I'm thinking about the future, right? I want to, in the future, I want to run a vault team. And so if I'm saying that Samir is going to be better than Crow in the long run, I could pick Samir if I plan to also pick up the Nemesis as well when she either reruns or maybe you're gonna wail a little bit. And then so it's gonna look something like that. You could run King, Samir, Nemesis, and just bench your Crow. If you have the money, go for it, my guys. And so generally speaking, thinking for the future is one of the only scenarios in which I would have done that, right? Like otherwise, Samir was never part of the equation. Let's try another example. So I'm gonna put Crow back, put King back to Shieldbreakers, and let's say I got Coco and I got freaking Zero, right? Two supports, a healer and a shielder. That's not exactly, you know, the best combo, but the option here is very, very clear. There is no Shieldbreaker, so I should pick up King or Meryl, if you want to be like a really, really 
Yikes kind of PvP player. We've got Meryl with the super armor. We've got Zero with the shield. I'll be covering these advanced combat mechanics very, very soon in like the next 24 hours. So subscribe if you do want to see more of that. But let's get back to this video. But you can kind of see like the logic coming out, right? So if I put this back, uh, that is support, support. And then let's say I got Samir. And let's say I got Tsubasa. Again, there is no shield breaker. It's easy. It's King or it's Meryl. And so let's take another example over here. What if we had King and Meryl? So we do have the shield breakers actually. Then from here, we can pick a DPS. Of these three, which one do you want? Do you want Tsubasa for the long-term viability or do you want Samir for the right now as well as potentially the viability with the Nemesis? Generally speaking, most players are going to be picking the Samir just because she is like so incredibly easy to use and she is the strongest DPS right now. You'll get a lot of value in her being able to help you push all of these like different game modes and potentially punish a lot of PvP players. So you're like, boo, 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 boo. And so in this scenario, there is nowhere where you could kind of justify, oh, I should get the Coco. Where's your damage. I mean, King could be your DPS. Oh, King could be your DPS. Therefore, Coco or Zero could actually be the pick. But if you do want to push that content, you probably are wanting more DPS in the form of Samir over here. But just remember that this is still an option. That is still an option. You probably shouldn't do that. You probably shouldn't do that. Let's go through another few examples. Uh, let's say Tsubasa and Shiro. What we have here is a DPS as well as a shield breaker. Is Shiro enough for you? For a lot of people, yes, but for majority, no. So should I pick up King? Maybe I should. And so what about if I do think that Shiro is enough? Well, I have a DPS here. I have a shield breaker here. I could actually go for a double DPS. The Samir is going to have a little bit of an extra staying power because of the Nemesis. And then now my team composition is a DPS, DPS slash support technically if you can get her C1 and then Shiro with the shield breaker. All right, so I think we've gone through like enough of these different scenarios. The last thing I did want to talk about before we ended it was uh, these two characters over here, Bayou Akui and Mark. Oh my God, I just butchered her name. But the TLDR is at Bai and Mark are going to be collab units. They're going to be limited units that are potentially, potentially unique to the China region. What that means is that these two characters may not be present in global and may actually not power creep our existing characters. So if I showed you these two, you'll see that Bai is actually in fact a lightning DPS. So if lightning DPS Bai, she is power creeping uh, who was, it was Samir. If she doesn't actually come along, then Samir is actually going to have that staying power. And I'm actually gonna bet on that. I, I am gonna bet that we're not gonna get these two collab characters over here. And so therefore, in my opinion, I think Samir is going to be the best lightning DPS. On the other hand, we've got Mark over here. And for you guys who don't know Mark, Mark is essentially another damage amplification unit. And so what that means is that the role that he fulfills, the damage amp, the damage support, is going to actually be a little bit more scarce. Meaning Tsubasa, C1 slash C6, and Claudia, C1 is going to actually be better than this. If I come over to this current tier list of the 2.0 patch, you see Mark, you see Mark uh, over here, Mark over here, and Mark over here. So therefore, if Mark actually disappears from here and here, then your Claudia, Claudia, Tsubasa, we've got a Tsubasa down here, you probably can't see. Oh wait, you can see. Uh, Claudia over here, Claudia, Claudia, Tsubasa. These are all going to actually be fantastic, suitable alternatives. And so hopefully knowing all of this and using the philosophies that I actually just outlined over here, you can actually go ahead and finally pick your SSR. Now, let's start talking about dupes. I think this document is fantastic in providing like a TLDR, a summary of who exactly you should go for dupes and when each of the breakpoints are. So if you didn't see the scale, essentially green is good, red is bad and orange is, uh, it's okay. Let's quickly have a look through some of these ones that are actually released. So for example, okay, Claudia is not released, Coco. Coco C1 is actually fantastic because you get additional healing. However, everything else is kind of okay. You know, some healing there, some healing over there. And then over here, I see Grant's teammate CC immunity. I know about you, man, but that sounds pretty good to me. Coming back, you can see over here, Huma is going to gain damage and tankiness based on the form. I believe she gains like some damage reduction as well as more attack. For Crow, his high air attack damage at C0, that means that he is serviceable at C0, but the C1, it's orange, it's not actually gonna be that important. So if I was picking between Crow or King, King's got a freaking red on C0, that means that people think he's not actually that good when he is just at his base. I would actually pick King over Crow, even though King is actually the shield breaker. Because again, I think you guys have all realized it by now, but most of the game modes, it's all centered around attack. DPS checks, making sure you can kill all of these monsters before the timer finishes up. Therefore, you generally speaking want to spend it on your DPS units. 
like Samir, that, that this is a fantastic one. It was a fantastic first star. And so my guys, I'm not going to regurgitate the content in here. Massive shout out to the boy who actually wrote this one. Uh, these guys over here. And hopefully this guide should be able to tell you which dupe you should pick up. Again, for me personally, I reckon it's going to be DPS and then shield breaker stuff and then your supports. And most of the time, you probably don't have time to get the support stuff. But if you really want to make people mold, for example, you could pick up like the 0C1 enable healing, shield, healing, people can't kill you, drop your nemesis turrets or just hit people from afar. It's going to be freaking annoying, man. But my guys, with that, I think that's going to wrap up the video. There's, I'm pretty sure there's not much left to talk about. If you guys still have questions about this, then please do let me know down in the comments below because I was hoping that this is very, very exhaustive. If you have, in fact, already used your SSR selector, let me know who you use it on. Tell me about your team and let me know why exactly you chose them. But otherwise, you already know what it is. Like, subscribe, notification bell, and uh, and as your boy Mark once said, all good things must come to an end. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.